and there's been so sh you see i think the generation we are in now it's where we now hear depression every day someone is depressed i remember was it a couple of years ago a very wealthy man i think a south african that was working for mtn i be with mtn jumped into the lagos lagoon who remember that story yeah yeah, yeah and there's been so sh this is now in the previous years these stories were not were not heard because the society made life to an extent easier for them you see so now we live in a society where it's unfortunate this politician left they are the people who are causing us depression most as we speak no, let's 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 be serious they are the people who are causing us depression as we speak in the 60s in the 70s or even in the 80s you'll be in final year your your 400 level nursing now if if it was in 1980 your unn nursing student at 400 level something like a university college hospital burden would have come to you people to say if you are interested in working with us write your name here once you graduate you come to our place find out ask your parents before as they are saying it, a british firm will come say if you want to work with us as a, a as a, a community nurse as a surge as a surgery nurse as a pediatric nurse come and you know write your name and that's to say they wouldn't even let you graduate and you are working already as at that time this internship nyc all these things were not in existence these things that are coming it, it's a uh, uh, director of employment that said bringing up these issues to fix you people more so these people the leaders we have the crop of leaders we have today keep bringing in very malicious policies very non-developmental very non-helpful to the young people majorly if you go around and buy and ask the causes of the, the main cause of depression among the youth today is you are, you are not meeting up like you said you start feeling worthless what makes you start feeling worthless waiting your mates they do you know they keep doing that's the number one and why are you not doing what your mates are not that are doing you don't have money why don't you have money you don't have a job okay now it's got to the level where people in their 50s and even 40s who have families they have children who don't go to good schools in quote or don't even go to schools every day people be talks about out of school children it stinks me because they, they like he might he, he know he fit know they see them very well because he's a big man you suppose you walk around and see them you drive and just much break at the traffic light you see three three children and on the window help us now help us what is the problem apart from they help you they help us people are different from those who are hawking why are they hawking they they have no money to go to school why is this so the, the people who are enacting policies very grievous we were supposed to have everything in order so these people keep making things very difficult for us we don't have jobs we don't have health care we, we have nothing nothing so that's that's why people get depressed like you are just not doing what you're supposed to do and why you're not doing what you're supposed to do it is okay you're supposed to be working and making money you've even schooled you've even graduated you are qualified to work in economics i think they said um how did they put it it's a, so the definition of unemployed person is someone who is qualified to work willing to work and then unable to find where to work She had her mother as her, her mother was her five and five. Like every 31 hours, she was talking to her mother, even when she was about to commit suicide. She was talking to her mother, her mother didn't know. She had written the note and dropped it and made the phone call and was, mother knew something was wrong. I was like, you know, sounding well. I was like, okay, no problem, I will talk. And then all of a sudden, mother called back, she wasn't picking. Next thing, she informed her to come to her daughter's apartment. That she had fallen from about 60, 60th floor or something you know she had everything now what really could have been the cause of this depression it might not be a recent thing it might be something it might have been a thing of the past some people on have undergone depression due to sexual molestation then come out of the depression they have come out of the depression they are now socializing but it still has this ptsd post-traumatic effect the, uh, disease yeah on them if he has this ptsd and sometimes you just see it a lively person today in two days person withdraws somebody might come for a gathering see something that being not be jovial and all of a sudden somebody makes a statement just 
to give you an instance somebody casually supports rape you know there are people that say don't blame let me give you an instance that you should not blame those who rape girls if it's the girl that seduced the guy there are people that are of that opinion yes. that if it is the girl that seduced the guy don't blame the guy what what did she want when she was seducing the guy now imagine somebody who has yes. had this thing and stays somewhere uh-huh. sees this the person is not in support of rape whether it is seduction or oh, not yeah. the person was lively and all of a sudden withdraws yeah. from that gathering you notice what's wrong the person say nothing two days three days you are meant to go for swimming you call the person the person tells you i'm not interested this is something that like you said we are very lively and then just a particular statement is going to make me completely withdrawn okay. i don't know if i should it's very funny okay let's say when i was a kid my aunt really stressed me out a lot <laughs> my aunt really stressed me out a lot with gluttony being dirty and lazy so this lady is my, mom, my mother's younger sister. She was staying with us, but then she was really stressing my life out about that. And she was loving my sister more than she loved me. Oh, yeah. She kept on buying her things, telling her that I'm lazy, telling her I'm not clean, that I eat too much, and plenty of things. And I was trying to stop it. I was trying to, I was trying to be better so that she would like me like my sister. I was very small. I started hating my sister actually. Even when she went out of the house and started going, to, she knows I don't like. I did not like her before. Mm. So, those kind of things. I really, I had a very bad time at home because my sister left home. I was just around my auntie and she made it a living here for me. And growing up, heaven knows I'm not dirty. I don't eat plenty. In my school, my friends finish my meal for me. <laughs> and then I am not lazy. When someone jokingly calls me lazy, I get really angry and I might even stop talking to you. Right? So let's say you come to my manager, I had just finished eating and then I dropped my plate to do something and then you come in and walk into a dirty place. Guy, finish your dirty. Guy, I feel no talk to you. <laughs> and that is it. And when someone calls me, a, it happened yesterday. So I, I was able to eat from school and we had classes from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. So I got biscuits. After our chapter by 12, I was trying to eat this cream cracker, just one cream cracker in my class, and someone said, Phoenix, you see the job. I asked her, how many times have you seen me eating today? This is just, <laughs> this is just the cream cracker I got this afternoon. And I got really pissed. I don't also throw out the cream. <laughs> I don't also throw out the class. And then throughout yesterday when I saw her, I was really very angry at her. And this thing you said now just made it make sense. I thought I was being very well. So what do you think I can do? Have we gotten the solution? Okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. what do you think can be done to this kind of thing? Because David, our friends really know. joke a lot, right? You can come to my room anytime and call me dirty or call my room with dirty and I'll really get Well, I, 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 I have not been in that situation, though. No. And I'm not a major in psychiatry, actually. So, but I think that um, one thing we can do to overcome this this thing is um, topply, we find a way to get used to the words by u- using those words. Now, I use my, I use the word think because, as I said, I'm not a major in psychiatry, but I think, you know, where a word where a word that triggers the, in your case, you have this word, this set of words that trigger it. It's like a no-no for you. Now, when someone uses it for you, you you feel all bust up and imagine where you gradually, jokingly make use of it in a setting that is not true. You get used to it. Now, you, let me give you an instance. A setting where you go into some, you just jokingly tell a friend, ah, you said, it's really a chop. And you, you know this person doesn't eat. You know that it's a lie, but you're just cracking a joke. If someone makes that statement to you, you weigh it before you, you react. Because at that point, because you use those kind of words in a setting that is not true, someone tells it to you, you begin to realize if truly it's true for you or not. Right now, someone tells you you do the chop, you feel you do the chop. You feel the person is talking to you based on what they've seen, what they've seen since childhood. <laughs> so I, I, I just feel one of the ways, if you have a trigger word, is to get used to those words. And how do you get used to those words? You start to yourself by making use of those words. Because I won't tell you to sit down, someone begin to sing the song the words to you so that you get used to it. No, I feel it's you getting used to the words, making use of the word and gradually or maybe 
your closest pal can be someone who can be using the words intermittently. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> but you you will get into a relationship if you are not into a relationship already. And I feel whoever is your partner should know. Yes. Yes, and I, we, we may go to a place and then okay, I, I try to can affect mental health, especially in relation to depression. Experience or what you think, any, any of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, anyway, um, mine will be from experience. So there is something I know that um, um, children, we learn from observation, hearing, and then seeing. And then sometimes our parents, the things they do, we watch them. And then other times we just get to summarize things because of what we have seen. So if I'm going to talk from experience, it should be... In 2017, I finished secondary school. Then I applied to get into university. Yes. So, yeah. it, I was going for medicine and surgery. But I did not get it. I think I tried five times before I came to Rwanda. But then the first few, I think the first year, I went for message. I got admission, but I was very small to leave Crush River State. My mother said I was too small to go outside Crush River. Then I stayed at home to write again, to continue writing. And since then, I've never gotten medicine and surgery again. But then, then that year, I started working in a pharmacy. I was trying to learn from my family doctor, which was easy. My mom said I still had the brain to write and then blah blah blah. The next day I tried, I did not get it. My mates were already getting into school. My parents were very supportive. I was very surprised because some persons are going to really get plenty of coding from their parents. But mine were very supportive at the time. I tried again the next year, it did not work. This was already like three years working in the pharmacy, like two years working in the pharmacy. It did not work. I'll cry and all of that stuff. Then there was this time, I think during the lockdown, we were all at home. This is the period where nobody's going out, everybody's at home. I was getting plenty of talks with my parents about school. I'm not the type who would calm down to reach. I don't calm down to reach. I'm going to tell you. I, 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 would, I would understand better if I'm reading under pressure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I thought I was the only one. Seriously, I work very well under pressure. But I know that the deadline is very far. I would no, not do relax. it. I know that as a person that when they work very fast, they make plenty of mistakes, but I am lucky that I don't make mistakes when I'm working under pressure and I do very well. So they asked me to start preparing, going for evening classes and all of that, and I'm not doing them. And it was very, very sad because they would scold me, say that my other sister was already in her finals in law and I have not even gotten into school. I had plenty of talks. They are not telling me that I'm worthless, but the things they were saying, there was only time they made me not because they were being wicked they were just saying that i would do everyone's show since i'm the only one that is not busy i would wake up i'll make breakfast everyone will go to school when they come back i already made lunch and then in the evening i'll make dinner this is the, I, I, I was literally doing everything at home and even if they don't tell me that i'm being worthless or i'm not making i'm not doing anything at home to get to school and stuff like that i feel very useless I had, I had suicidal ideas. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> February 2021 was terrible because I went to one building like that and almost jumped from there. I was crying. I cried a lot. I had plenty of people already in school and I have applied for medicine and surgery four times already. Then I went to do this pre-degree program in Unical and my chemistry was cancelled. After we spent about 300k to run the entire program, my father said it was my fault that I was not ready. I and mean, I was really down. I had plenty of problems, so much. I would cry alone and stuff like that. Now, recently, we're talking about it at home, and then my mother was saying that parents get really involved in their children's studies and stuff like that, and they are the reason why most of their children are depressed. And I'm in my head saying, you know that you contributed to my depression a few years ago, and you're the one giving me this advice. <laughs> These things they know, but when it's that, I think it's easier when you're the one saying it to someone else and yes, not when it's happening to you. It's true. Then I, I think what I did myself at the time was just to 
you know when I got into school, I think I was the oldest in my room. I had cost me to get 16, going to 17. And I think that I was, I'm already in school, right? But this thing was really depressing. Like, how would I have people in my class and they are 17? I'm looking at you with like four years age difference. What's with this? Wait, and it's so bad. It's I don't so know. Bad. It's a private university, right? They were okay, even yeah, someone at 15 years old. And then I'm getting into school and seeing these people. Um, I was really depressed. And I learned to not talk to my parents because it was almost impossible. So, when parents, this communication thing, right? African parents don't do that a lot. Sure. And they will always tell you not to talk back at them when they are talking. Oh. But you know that if you talk back at them, they will get, they will have that sense. But no, we don't do that. So I think communication is very vital, but our okay. parents don't do that. So the major problem I had in my time, nobody told me, don't worry, it's not your fault. You are doing well and everything. I just had the, you know, this person went to school. Oh, yes. In my 200 level, I was asked to drop out and write jump again for medicine and surgery. Yes. I did not, of course. But then, these small things they are doing are just painting pictures in my head that they are, I am not enough. Enough, yes. And I'm not doing enough, right? And these kind of things can just make me lose my self-esteem outside. I'm heading to 400 level, and there is still a picture in my mommy's head that I'm going to study medicine after not. I happen to find myself in a, in a secular world today as a politician and as a business mogul. So, I think, um, well, I would say that I'm lucky to be here, though I did not expect it. But I have to give some brief ideas based on what she I kind of succumbed this uh, wonderful gathering for, you get. So, I so acknowledge and believe that uh, the things that surround us, it's the key to the depression that many of us are having today. Rise and bring that. You know, there is this mentality I believe in Africa. African thinks a lot. You get. To me, everybody have their own understanding of life. How they understand things. How you get me. But I believe it is what one give his or her own mind more focus and attention to. That's cause that may help to cause depression. Like in the sense that that is when you will find out in some religion, they will tell you, let you're a Catholic. I'm a Catholic. My father or my mother and my mother will tell me, do not marry someone outside Catholic. You get none. Eventually, as a stubborn child, and I say, I would want to do what is outside what they have said reason being for love's sake are you getting me now i'm bringing that into the table what are you welcoming you are welcoming depression as well because that's which you will contribute along the run will be inherited by those kids because as you guys are probably in that home they are all yes their ears are all open and they are listening to everything and that helps a lot to contribute to that depression so now the key is now absorbing all those things it may help them to start not being focused or gaining the full attention that they need to get either in school or any place they may find themselves get so i think uh, the means in which all of this can be reduced is this it's very very simple that's to me I think we should pay less attention to what will make you feel so depressed. Reason being that you undermining yourself as a human being makes you more depressed. You get, I need to achieve this, but for eventually you cannot achieve this within 24 hours or within one month. You totally feel depressed about yourself. Yes. You get, so it is the thinking we give to things that result to all of this so like how can we create more supportive family environment for people that are depressed or people that are going through depression in the house or maybe as a people in, uh, in the house your friend that you notice is having that uh, having okay let me uh, let me just let me just put it as an example a friend of yours is having depression like the cause is actually from his or her family 
uh, and you notice it is there a, a way you could support that person create a supportive environment for such a person yeah like um like a dog right you say i believe okay well i only i believe uh, listening to people attentive listening like be good with listening then some someone might might come to you and i say guy i hate this thing now you'll be like ah and uh, understand why do you hate this thing? why would you hate it you understand i will be dragging first of all i believe you'll be like why do you hate this why do you hate listen this? to the person has anything happened before what 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 made you hate it yes you listen to the person hear the person out and you know offer your solution and a solution i believe is the best solution to offer to someone is that you put yourself in the, in the person's shoes yeah that's what I, I my own solution i used to advise people my, my only advice i used to give to people is that see if it is me this is how i will do it because i have tend to put your, myself in your situation then think of if i'm in this situation how would i get out of this situation mm-hmm. and i will not give you my own advice and if i'm the person in this situation see how we handle it it. and this is is this the way i believe if you handle it like this we turn out like this or we turn out like that so we should always be you know listening and provide support to our friends even family if you know what is good uh uh, my principal then when we are in school used to um quote uh is it matthew or something i don't forget he he says the (laughs) god <laughs> yeah, 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 golden rule. Uh, yeah, yeah, he used to say that is the golden rule. Okay, you know, do to others what you want. Exactly. He says okay. that is the golden rule. So anything that you know that if they do you this and that it will be okay, then do it to others. But if you if they do it to you that it will be hot, then don't do it. So that's just it. Yeah, that's, that's that's solutions are uh what we offer. Or prefer when we notice a challenge or difficulty if we know what causes depression in children or in our words like in my case i've said being overly strict i think one of the ways to overcome it is being able to loosen up a little there are some ways we could correct a child and give them some aspects of freedom to learn from the correction we've all had experiences i've had experiences of buzzbows when i was small but you know if we can loosen up give them an an opportunity to learn from this we can correct too but give them an opportunity to learn let them see that sometimes they do something you correct them sometimes they don't intend to do it but they do it you know there's a difference between doing it intentionally and doing it by mistake sometimes somebody might do something intentionally you correct maybe after like a month or two the person did does the same thing but not intentionally you should be able to know that okay this is the person is now at least consciously the person didn't do this the person is coming out of this mistake be able to correct but not being overly strict and corrective if not it makes the person withdraw especially people that have um people that stay with them that are not their children there's a way you will correct them or be too strict compared to where the person is coming from it affects the person yes and person feels isolated and withdraws and maybe it's a long vacation of four weeks the person is there now feels that depression for like two weeks by the time he goes there he may loosen up but the fact is that that depression has affected him he has experienced it and it's not going to be so new when he feels that kind of setting again in another place so i feel one of the solutions i prefer is to relax in correcting our words and not to be overly strict i think identify the problems and provide solutions so in this case that's what i identified as a problem and that's the solution okay.